Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project 2 Buried in Time. Two trials down and one to go. Except we have this in the way. Luckily that's not too devious. It could have been a lot worse if they actually, you know, did something with it other than just a wonderful rock hopping transition. Gage, relax. It's a door. It's the third one I've seen. It's weird. Alright. More translation time. Remember that this one is apparently supposed to be the water god. Those who wish to gain counsel with Lalak must cross the waters of disbelief on the stepping stones of faith. Realm of the Re oh, whoops, sorry, not water, rain specifically. Make an offering. Let's get back to Earth there, thank you. Something tells me that the water god wouldn't know what to do with a pair of galoshes or an umbrella. Maybe it's a lot simpler than that. Maybe he would accept rain itself, or even just water. Which does make sense. Now for pretty much going down through our entire inventory to get to what we need. The water canister. Remember this from all the way back in Farnstein's lab? Well, we actually have a reason to use it now. Let's give it some rain. How did the acolyte pick, scoop that up? Or is there a vacuum system back there? Now, of course, it's the same way, I believe, as the gold coins. You just keep having water. Okay, one more tunnel that goes back outside to the river. Hmm. Hey, who's the architect who built this bridge? This place is like the Winchester Mystery Pyramid. Well, they look a little rickety, but they'll probably hold your weight. Maybe we should cross and see if there's any way to get up to that door. Alright, well, I kind of want to look around first, you know? It's rather interesting. Okay. Well, let's cross. Except for the, this one problem. The door's over there. So... What kind of bridge is this where it doesn't lead to its destination? Okay. Well, let's head back. Whoa. Something's making noise right behind me. Ah, very clever, Glasshopper. Wow. This is a pretty elaborate contraption. The Maya were amazingly advanced, but I never would have imagined this level of mechanical engineering. From the sound of it, there's a water wheel down below that's driving this whole mechanism. That tells me that there must have been a particular season for these priesthood initiation trials. Part of the reason the rain god was so important to the Maya was that the Yucatan was susceptible to drought. If we'd arrived a few months later, there would have been a little more than a trickle to drive these platforms. Honestly, I don't know why Arthur is yelling. I know it's supposed to be for the atmosphere of the loud contraption in front of us, but couldn't they just raise the audio? Careful not to jump too late. Try to leave the platform so it'll catch you on the downswing. Exactly, and that health message leads to a very nice death, which I won't be going into just yet. On a return trip, I will. Now, to get across this bridge... It's going to involve timing. The timing is honestly extremely simple. But the camera angles that they use here are kind of awesome in their own right. Oh, there we go. Alright. 
and we should just be able to... There. Now we're across. We enter the altar for the rain god. That would be Tlaloc, the rain god. Okay then. Might as well go ahead and translate what's above it. All we'll say is pretty much the rain god Tlaloc. There we go. It looks pretty nice. Is it supposed to be teeth? I'm not very versed in what Mayan artwork is supposed to be like. However, here is our last piece, the limestone block. Pyramid shape block. So that means we have three. The jade, we have the limestone, the jade, and the obsidian. All three of these are going to be playing a part in the final bit of this place, which we are going to hit to right now. Alright, let's get out of here and cross that bridge once again. And I'm sure you know you want to. Even the camera's taken away from you in order to get on. Okay, let's hop on. Oh. I can get on. Oh, nope, nope, I can't. <laughs> in attempting to prove his worth to the Mayan Rain God, Agent 5 fell 30 meters from a bridge of swinging platforms to the raging waterfall below, inadvertently appeasing the God of Death. The next of kin have been notified. We're up to 143. Plus those two that I showed in the last video. So 145. I actually didn't know about those last two in the last video. But anyway. Be right back. Alright, let's cross this bridge once again. The window for success is actually, I believe, fairly large. You really have to be screwing up in order to die here. And this last section of the bridge barely moves. Oh. Oh, they stopped. How novel of them. Alright, let's get out of here. That is the three trials completed. There's one final door in these caverns. Hopscotch, hopscotch. Except the stone is your death. Now back the way that the wealth god door was. We can continue to go straight ahead. There's one more door. some... hmm... some evidence? Somewhere around here. Well, let's go ahead and translate what the door is saying beforehand. The final trial is the first sacrifice. The Deadland. Complete the pyramid to pass. So, yeah, the game couldn't put in all the trials in order to get to the Deadland, so instead of nine trials, there's three. Because at the end of the journey of, the, of any Mayan going through the Underworld, their ultimate destination is the Deadland. Void of joy or happiness, which is not something that's really nice. This is the door to Mictlan, the Deadland. The Maya called it that because it was said to be ruled over by Mictlan Tecutli, their god of death. Complete the pyramid. In Mayan mythology, you had to go through each of the other levels of the underworld to reach the realm of the Death God. Maybe we need something to prove that we've passed the other levels. If the other doors lead to the other realms of the underworld, 
And there must be something there that we're supposed to bring back to complete the pyramid. Hmm. Alright. Well, there's still some evidence here that we have to find, and it looks like this is looking pretty suspicious here. Usually you look down in order to find evidence, it seems. Alright then. Arthur doesn't really have anything to say about it, but let's see what we just scanned. We're up to nine pieces of evidence here. Replicated glass fragments. Why would these be here? Hmm, alright. Well, anyway, let's see about getting our way in here. This door is different from the other ones, obviously, because of the pyramid shape here. So, what do we have in our inventory that we just picked up that is a pyramid shape? Well, how about the three blocks that we got from the other three trials? This one's obviously very shiny. So, yeah, let's just put in all the blocks that we just picked up. Limestone, jade, and obsidian. Not in the order that I put it in, but anyway. Now we have access. Alright. And you notice that the blocks came back into our inventory? That's so we're able to get in here quickly if we ever have to recall and come back here. Because there's one more thing that we need, and it's, in, and it's for this room that you may not have. This is spooky. Spooky, spooky. Ugh. The top of this bridge seems to be a sharpened obsidian blade. Talk about walking gingerly. If one leg slipped off, you'd be beside yourself. I said, beside yourself. Forget it. Yeah, pretty much if you make a misstep, um, I'm gonna be, you're gonna be getting a very nasty cut. Okay. Well, no way to go but forward. I would imagine that when a supplicant reached this room, there would be a sacrifice victim tied to the altar, and the priest would all be arranged in a circle around the perimeter of the chamber. The only exit from these caverns seems to be through that passage on the other side. So if you pass the trial, they would pivot the bridge around to let you across. If not, well, I guess you're on your own, buddy. That explains some of the skeletons we found, trying to find their way out. Hmm. Surprising that there isn't actually any priests here. you think at this time of the season, because the, um, the bridge and the rain god trial was able to work, you think this place would be active. My, my, my. Snakes, snakes, and more snakes. These guys were really obsessed. Hate to be the guy who had to carve all those. He must have been sick of them by the end. Hmm. Alrighty then. This is our final destination, it looks like. I don't believe we're actually able to translate that image all the way from over here. No, and you're not able to actually get over there either. <sighs> limitations, limitations. Anyway. Uh, let's go down. And there's even some more evidence in here. Judging from the bloodstains, this is either an operating table or a sacrificial altar. Either way, there's been a lot of open-heart surgery performed here. I hope that's not what they expect us to do. Well, it seems pretty obvious that the Mayan priests required a human sacrifice as the last rite of initiation. Looks like they put the hearts into that blood-filled basin on the left. Alright then, let's take a look. I can click anything, apparently. Except it doesn't really do anything. Nope. Well, let's see about where that evidence is. Because it looks like it's on the table somewhere. Not in the clear one, not in any of the basins. Looks like it's in the blood? Or it is the blood? Anyway. Traces of synthetic blood. 
So, the agent that was here broke his or her way into this room with something in order to jam it into the pyramid shape outside on the door. Where did they get the synthetic blood from? In order to do this trial, and what were they looking for that is able to show up here? Hmm. Well, let's see. We're not able to actually do anything examining-wise here. Also not able to put anything specific here. This is pretty much an area where you either try and put everything you can, every, everything in your pockets, into here. Or you know exactly what it is. For instance, your preserved heart. Remember, this is a sacrificial room, so you need something that relates to the body. Careful with this. In my time, the only people who ever tried opening it were found dead. Poisoned. I don't think it'll be very forgiving if you enter the wrong combination of glyphs. You might want to know what it is you're spelling out. It's been said that the key phrase to open this container would have been written somewhere on the walls of the temple. But since in our time the pyramid is in ruins, no one has been able to open it. What was that inscription in the temple about a holy vessel? If this is the holy vessel that they were referring to, then that message must have been the key. So I hope you have that written down somewhere, or you remember it. Because we're going to be dealing with it. Also, don't save here. Because I have a really bad tendency, especially with my game, for save games to really screw up your game. If you save here after you do the ritual, and before you touch the, um, the puzzle box here, you will restore, but the puzzle box won't be floating here, and you won't have a preserved heart in order to do this. So you'll have to go through all the way through uh, Da Vinci Studio again, if you're even able to. So yeah, I, I don't recommend it. However, we're not going to be doing this properly at all, so... Because, you know, poison. Poison is fun. But this is where the Translate Biochip really comes in handy, because you need to know what kind of combination you're going to be making. A altar gives night. So, if we look at all of these, all of these symbols have different words on them. Underworld, Holy, the Supplicants, Breath, Lords, God, Realms, Vessel, From, Comes, Named, yeah. Miklan, War, Ixamna, yeah. The vessel contains Underworld. Open! Yeah, so this is what happens with the puzzle box. If you know the extra videos, you would know the information of that puzzle box. If you get it wrong, it juts out poison needles right through your pants. And apparently through the suit as well. Some sharp stuff here. In the caverns below Chichen Itza, Agent 5 discovered an ornate Mayan puzzle box. Thinking that he knew the combination, he tried to open it. The sting of the poison needle piercing his hand told him he was wrong. Next, the kin had been notified. We found all the supporting evidence, though. We're done there. Except because we've lost, um, over that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, be right back with the right combination this time. Okay, back to this. Now, uh, Arthur was mentioning that this is the holy vessel that the game is... Or, that the temple is, um referring to, in terms of the wall inscriptions at the very beginning of the time zone. So, if you actually go back there, uh, one of them actually gives you the answer. One of the inscriptions says, The holy vessel contains the breath of its zamna. To touch the holy vessel is to become a vessel of the word of its zamna. So, obviously you're looking for what's inside here. And the answer is actually what's inside here. So, if this is the holy vessel, what does it contain is the question. 
So if I actually are able to scroll at this properly. So the holy vessel contains the breath of Itzamna. This is also proper too, if you want to be wrong. The breath of death, well, because of the poison and everything. But the breath of Itzamna. Hey, that's an Environ cartridge, isn't it? And it's loose. It hasn't been incorporated into the artifact like in the other time zones. You should take it. Maybe it'll provide us with some information. Oh, sorry. Uh, this one's on the house. Yes, after, what, 153, 154 hints, you're finally giving us a free one? Thanks, Arthur. You're real pal. But yes, this is our final piece of critical information. And actually, our mission complete message right up there. Because we found the source of the ripple. It's also unlabeled, which is odd. We'll have to see what it actually contains. It better be important. And of course we can't do anything with the puzzle box because it's just kind of floating here. But that actually leaves us with all four of the pieces of critical evidence. And also all of the supporting evidence as well. It's got the synthetic blood and the electronic device inconsistent with the technology level of this time period. That and the math in the Codex Atlanticus, the diamond in the in Richard the First sword, and the schematics in Arthur's sculpture. Something's going on here, of course. But what do all of the what do these four have to do with what's going on and why we're being framed? We still don't have a perfect picture. However, that picture... Let's get rid of that puzzle box. That picture will come very, very shortly. In fact, next time. Because next time, we're actually going to be returning to our house. We haven't been there in a while. We're actually recalling to our house. We're done with all four time periods and we have everything that we need. So let's see what's on that Environ cartridge maybe figure out who is behind this. See you next time, everyone. Yeah, right. Take a look around you. If there was a way out of here, don't you think that Twiggy and Skeletor here would have found it by now? No. Look, this is definitely a trap. Looks like our only choice is to time jump out and try again. Hey, wow, nice work. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to carve stone? And all these guys had to work with were primitive stone tools and a spirograph.